I'm Peter Jones, editor at County Deer Stalking. It's mid-May and the roebuck season is in full swing. However, as well as there being increased activity amongst the bucks, roe does can also be seen sometimes wide out in the open, having just given birth to their young in the long grass. This month, I take a rangy neck shot off sticks in order to dispatch a cull buck and take a look at the reasons behind my selection. We set out in the early morning gloom. Two munchak quickly show themselves but fail to present a safe backstop and disappear off into the wood before we get a chance at a shot. As the light improves, we bump two row before heading off to a favourite spot where a previously glassed a suitable buck. We spot our buck and an accompanying doe grazing out in the open. Both animals instantly make a beeline for the hedge. Having spotted us, the doe crosses through the hedge into the opposite field. Getting quickly onto the sticks, I ready myself for the buck to follow suit. Thankfully he does, but frustratingly my line of sight is partially obscured by a fence post, Got leaving a neck shot as the only option. Okay, good. We found our roebuck. <clears throat> bit unusual this one. Now he's come through the hedge when he spotted us and then he's come about another 20 yards on. Now because of his body position I've not been able to take a traditional heart lung shot. Instead I've had to take a neck shot or well, that's what I'm hoping. So I've taken a neck shot there. As a result of the neck shot he's dropped that's very typical because with a neck shot you get a immediate paralysis that's the shock imparted by the bullet and possibly the severing of the spine has caused him to drop and that's what he's done but what's really important with neck shooting is that you watch that animal so keep your eye on where he's been because if you've only nicked the spine and I've seen this happen if you nick the back of the neck or nick the spine it causes only a temporary paralysis and that animal doesn't bleed out. He gets back up again sometimes and he can go. A little bit unsteady on the feet very often if you've, if you've nicked the spine, a bit unsteady, but they will get back up and they'll gain confidence and they'll, they'll get a little bit stronger and they will disappear. So it's absolutely crucial with neck shooting, watch your animal. So we're gonna give this animal a good five minutes now keeping an eye on him, covered, we've reloaded the rifle, and then if that gets back up again, I'm gonna be ready straight away to take my second shot to dispatch it. Okay, so we come forward about another 100 yards. 
and that animal as I say has dropped into the long grass but I think I can spot it and it's very still always as you approach these animals keep looking at them look for any twitches of the ear any movement that might give you an indication that it could get back up again or it's not dead because you always want to be thinking that it's, it might be necessary to dispatch it with a second shot but on this occasion I can see that it's looking pretty lifeless so we're going to go up a little bit further and, um, and double check again in about another 50 yards. Good. Okay, so we've got our roebuck. And he's just the animal that we wanted as well. We know that he's dead, there's no reaction when we've done the eye blink test. So what I'm gonna do now is unload the rifle. Okay, so we're back on our animal here. Let's talk about shot placement first of all. Now, as I said, I was going for a neck shot here. A little bit unusual, but because of his body position, that was the best shot that was available to me. Now, we took the shot from back up here, and just before we got up on the sticks, I pinged it with these EL Swarovski rangefinders at 197 yards. And this is why he's dropped to the shot. We've got a neck shot, and that will have probably severed the spine, or at the very least caused a massive paralysis. And so he has dropped. If you had gone for a heart-lung shot, that would have caused the animal, the reaction, to kick its back legs out and run. But with a neck shot, this reaction to drop to the, to, to the shot is absolutely typical. Let's turn him over, we'll have a look at the um, exit wound. Okay, there we are. So here's our exit wound. Always with the exit wounds, they're bigger than the entry wounds, and that's because we're using expanding ammunition. So let's have a better look at this animal and decide what we've got exactly. He's the animal that we were after, uh, which is great news. And let me tell you exactly why we were after this beast. Let's look at the coat here, first of all. Now we're in mid-May, in a mild, spring mild start to the to the summer he's still in winter coat look at this this gray brown is a sign of winter coat under here we've got the ready summer coat coming through we can see the red here now this is a typical sign of an older animal aging roebuck or aging roe deer as a whole is notoriously difficult but there are a few indications which will help you the first one, as I say, is this winter coat. Now, like an old person, you might expect to keep their winter coat on a little bit longer. Um, that's exactly what roe do. They'll keep, the older animals keep their winter coat. And so you might have expected a younger animal to be a much redder colour. The next indication, and a really important one, this one, is tooth wear. Now, when we look at the animal's teeth, Look at the molars and see how protruded they are from the gum line. Now again, this is not an exact science. Some grounds are very gritty and so the teeth wear down quicker. But this is a fairly soft wearing ground and one would expect a younger animal to have molars which were quite sharp still and pronounced from the gum. But with this animal I can see that the teeth are really flat. I can rub my finger over that without any coarseness. Very, very flat, very worn down, and really only oh, a millimeter, two millimeters above the gum line. So I'm thinking that we've got an older animal here. So again, coming to why we've selected him. Let's have a look at the antlers. This is our next indication. Now, there's no surefire way of saying one year or every year uh, a robot will have good set, they, they've, their antler growth varies year to year. But with this beast, he's up to his ears in growth. Now I always say to people that if you're after a good trophy, you want to be above those ears by a fair margin. 
but as we can see he's only just about up to his ears in growth here. They're quite thin especially towards the top here and we've only got four points. A classic roebuck head is a six pointer and that would be the front tine or the brow tine as we call it here and the top points but with a classic you would also have a back point on each side giving you your six points. The purling is very poor as we come up on the outside of the antler here on a good beast you will get purling all the way up the beams even coming up to the tines but the purling there's a little bit here on the inside but again very very poor. The coronets are touching and they're actually growing together. Now as I say it's not an exact science aging this animal but that the fact that we have more weight around the coronets down here would indicate that he is a little bit older uh, but nonetheless a poor head for an animal of this age. 